See, let's get right on into this football news. Of course, uh, we covered a lot of our other Saints news. Benjamin Watson signing, him, him coming back. Willie Sneeds uh, going out there checking with Baltimore to see oh, if no, they he's want still him. Ain't Cameron me. Meredith. I think uh, we're waiting until drive time thing. to see what we're going to do with Sneed. You know? like, right. I mean, but maybe, you also. Maybe Baltimore is too. Perhaps. And then we also have the situation where, you know, you have other things happening as well. The Saints are looking at uh, drafting, trying out little guys, you know, talking to wide receivers or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, about potentially coming here. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, as the Saints uh, obviously looking to try to upgrade the wide receiver position. Of course, you know about the fact that we didn't get an M. Dominican uh, sue in that uh, in that situation. So it's pretty interesting to see what the Saints, and what Tampa they're looking Bay at. So. Uh, what was that guy's name from the you know, New York Giants? Uh, Jason Pierre Paul. So we got to contend with that now. So we definitely going to have to get some offensive line help in the draft at some point too. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, it definitely is going to come to it. We're going to go over the drafts as well to see uh, what we could do. Oh, yeah, the, little, the prospect that the Saints were looking at was uh, young is a, a, a young safe uh, a cornerback, actually, who can play. Uh, what, who the Saints are looking at playing as a safety. Matter of fact, they told him that they see him more as a safety. And that's coming from uh, Austin Gale. Uh, he shouted out via Twitter that the Saints met with former UC uh, cornerback Lyndon Stevens. And, of course, Stevens is six feet, 195. He was told by Saints personnel that they view him more as a safety than they would do at a corner position. So they're out there looking at uh, guys uh, from the University of Cincinnati, a, a cornerback, and then they – talking to people so it's now, very interesting this, this is a, a thing the Saints do that I actually hate um, <laughs> we do this and we try to get these guys and mold them and I think it's based on a, a foundation that we have with the offensive line we're constantly able to get offensive line guys and to convert them over to different positions and, and it's successful right but every time I've seen the Saints try to set any <laughs> other position <laughs> it's on never work <laughs> please don't draft that guy <laughs> Don't Let that, that man play cornerback for somebody else. <laughs> don't mess his career up. All right, listen, man. Don't worry about it. Look, uh, uh, Stevens family, we don't listen to what DC <laughs> said, man. We'd be happy to have him on our team, man. As a cornerback, a safety. He can't be no worse I would than like Devontae him at a, Harris. At a cornerback. He can't be no worse than Devontae Let Harris, so let's just get that straight. Let okay. Him All right. Uh, and we can have him in a, uh, a three safety set <laughs> when Coleman or Bell or one of them guys tired. That's weird. <laughs> anyway, let's get right on to it, DC. Uh, shall I go first or should you go first? Uh, Give the people your mock draft, the first, uh, your first of the season, Sports Coma DC mock draft. Of course, he'd be having that posted on his page <laughs> so you can check it out. Uh, we'll, it'll be on the regular Sports Coma page as well. So here's DC with his uh, seventh round Mock draft. Did the, of the whole sh- sh- boing boing. I did oh, it all. DC, the floor is yours. So at the the first pick of the first round, the New Orleans Saints. Well, it ain't the first pick, but the first pick for me. Select DJ Moore of Maryland. Man, this guy's. You took DJ electric. Moore as your first pick, the twenty seventh pick. Yes, I did. Oh, okay. Uh, he was projected to be maybe a nineteenth, eighteen pick. So I felt like I got a steal. All right. Well, I took uh, DJ Moore. Any reason why you want to? Uh, most people would say to take an edge rusher or uh, potentially to take a tight end. First off, I think it would suck to take a tight end in the first round. Um, I look at the last 10 years or so, I don't know any amazing tight end that came out of the first round. I'm not saying there ain't one or two, but generally all the tight ends that are in Pro Bowls came in the middle rounds. So why would I select one in the first round? Okay. Just my thinking. All right. That makes so sense. So I took DJ Moore because we're in uh, limbo at the wide receiver position. And if you think about it, at this point right now, for this draft, right now, based on the moves we have, we basically only have three receivers. So, <laughs> I mean, I would consider that a pressing need. So Who's the third receiver? The third receiver would be uh, – the third receiver would be for the what? Saints. Ted Ginn. You count him as a third receiver, or you say the second who's receiver? Who's the third? Who's the second receiver? Then? Damn. Well, we only got two then. I, I was gonna say Corey Fuller because uh, I remember we had him on the practice squad. He got hurt. What about he the little fella? Yeah, uh, Tommy Lee Lewis. 
Tommy Lee, Tommy Jerry Lee Lewis. Lewis is kind of like you know when you when you got some food and you cooking, and you know that that stuff at the bottom, like right before you. That's get not to right, the- man. <laughs> Not the burnt stuff. You know, the good stuff. You can still eat. I don't want to eat nothing from the bottom of the pot. It's at the bottom of the pot, man. He not, you know, he's just a guy. I don't think nobody would take uh, that as a compliment. (laughs) Anything pertaining to the It wasn't meant to be. (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, I I drafted DJ Moore, man. Uh, He's an electric guy. He reminds me of Sneve Smith, actually. And I remember how he, how much he gave yes. us headaches, and I would hate to see a team like Carolina get That's him. big compliments. Um, man. St- he he can um he can catch a slant, take it to the house. He can catch a bubble screen, take that to the house. He can burn you deep, catch the ball. Uh, the only flaw I've seen in his game, he ain't learned how to that toe tap swag yet. Need to get that popping. Uh, he can even get the ball out the backfield on a reverse uh, as a running back, and he can kick and punt return. And y'all know how much we need help there. Unless we want to risk the health of Alvin Kamara, who's also pretty excellent back there too. Full full uh, full full two speed at the uh, at forty yard dash. Two She's speed, six feet tall, two ten. Good size on him. Might be a good very, call. Very DC. very good prospect. What are we looking yeah. at? What's your next right, pick, so my friend? Moving on to the second round, we got Chris Herndon. Guess what his position is? This is a tight end, y'all. Herndon. Okay. In the third round, what well, we need to get him, you know. Like well, uh, Jimmy Graham was, you know, and he come from Miami. Well, we also had Jeremy Uh-oh. Shockey, right. the last guy that I can remember that went in the first round that was actually pretty good as a tight end and kind of lived up to it. So we got Chris Herndon, man, big guy, uh, six foot, six foot four, two hundred and fifty three pounds, big big dude. Don't have any stats on his 40 time, but he had an excellent career in Miami. And the track record for Miami and us with tight ends speaks for itself. So why not take a swing on this guy? Nobody's really talking about him, but I think he's an excellent tight end. So moving on to my next pick in the fourth round, we drafted Kyle Lalata out of Richmond. This is uh, probably the sixth, seventh best quarterback in the draft. Coming out of Richmond after Kyle Falk. Basically, a guy that's pretty good. He put up some good numbers. You don't know what you're going to get, but you take a guy like this and you pair him with Sean Payton, you may have fireworks. Or maybe not, and we just hit at it again next year. But a pretty decent prospect for where he was where he was taken. And um, you definitely can't argue with it. This was the best quarterback available. And for a guy like this, who is projected to probably be a third-round pick to still be in the fourth round is pretty amazing. So moving on, and as you can see the trend, I went against him, and I drafted all offensive teams. <laughs> so let me speed it up because uh, Q going to take over on the next side. I got Bo Scabro, banging running back from uh, Alabama, just in case Mark Ingram decides to leave. Big old bruiser, pair up well with Alvin Kamara. Then I got Will Clapp, who can also play the center position who's a guard out of LSU. Pretty amazing offensive lineman. Got Sean Dion Hamilton from Alabama. They had two picks in the fifth round, so both Gabriel and Will Clapp fifth round picks. Sixth round is uh, Sean Dion Hamilton, Alabama linebacker. Enough said, those guys pump them out, pump them out. We got Kevin Tolliver from LSU. Great six foot two cornerback. He's a lot better, in my opinion, than the number one guy. My last pick is James Looney out of Cal. So Cam Jordan bring him up to speed. And we about to take our break. You know we got to go pay them bills. So this sports coming with Big Q and the guy. And we'll see y'all on the other side. Q going to give y'all his synopsis.